already. Uh, so, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Yuji Chen from Cornell, and uh, um, today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, present a paper I, I read uh, for the Biotics Field Journal Club. Um, and the title of this paper is uh, Room Temperature Structures Beyond 1.5 Armstrong by Serial Phantom Second Crystallography. And it is published in Structural Dynamics in 2015. And the authors are from our uh, Bioxfield STC. It's the Mar Mar Marius group from UW uh, Milwaukee. And um, so th this paper focused on uh, deriving the uh, high resolution structure of photoactive yellow protein, aka uh, PYP protein from uh, SFX a show for serial femtosecond crystallography. It is not based on new experiments. Instead, it is a revisit of a proof of principle experiment conducted using SFX, uh, LCS, CXI station, and published in 2014 already. But uh, what I found interesting is, um, is that um, they were able to push the resolution limit of the of about uh, 2.5 million snapshots of the dark state of PYP uh, from like 1.6 Armstrong to 1.46 Armstrong. Uh, so I think um, I think the paper uh, is definitely worth reading and find uh, you know, just to find out the new methods uh, they use to achieve the the higher re re resolution. So first, a little background of PYP. So it is a protein that undergoes um, a photocycle with numerous intermediate states that accumulate and decay on multiple uh, time scales from picoseconds to seconds. And uh, after the protein absorbs a blue light, and the photocycle is controlled by a trans to cis isomerization of central uh, chromophore that is covalently linked to a cis 69 of the protein. Uh, which is shown in figure one of the paper and uh, on my slides as, uh, on the right side of my slide. Um, and detail of this, uh, of the, all these different intermediate states uh, along the photocycle can be found in the paper uh, published in Science. Uh, but this paper focused more on the dark state the PG uh, and trying to improve the, the, the resolution limit against the SFX experiment. Uh, so this paper uh, first briefly described the uh, experimental method used for the 2014 nature paper, uh, I'm sorry, science paper. So the crystal size was about five, uh, five micron by two micron, and uh, it is showing uh, figure 2a of the paper. Uh, and figure 2b of the paper shows one of the diffraction pattern on a CS pad de detector uh, used at CXI. And the center orange mask is the region uh, is the region of CS pad uh, that got electro electronically attenuated by a, a, about a factor of seven, just to balance the intensity between uh, low and the high resolution reflections, so that uh, the center part will not be saturated. So snapshots with Hits was identified by Cheetah, and the indexing and integration was accomplished by Christopher. And some other uh, programs was used and described in, in this paper to uh, for structural refinement, and B factor calculation, and so on. Um, so the statistics of the experiments, such as resolution, uh, percentage of hits, percentage of uh, in the indexable hits, and R splits were all shown in, uh, in table one of the paper. Uh, so the paper found it is uh, kind of difficult to determine the uh, resolution limit using the conventional uh, crystallography parameter, uh, such as I over C guy, uh, because the large short to short intensity uh, variation and spectral fluctuation of X field. So the authors, uh, they instead use a, a, a Fourier shell correlation of FSC, uh, and the equation is shown uh, show on the slide, and to estimate the resolution limit. 
So figure four of the paper shows the FSC and R split as a function of one over D square. So the criteria of FSC is like 50% um, as, as presented in the, in the paper and the resolution limit was accordingly determined to be uh, 1.46 Armstrong when, where, uh, when the FSC falls below 50%. So uh, figure four also shows the R split, uh, R split change as a function of one over d square. Uh, but um, they found it, it, it is really difficult to use it to determine a resolution limit. So uh, with the new 1.45, uh, I'm sorry, 1.46 Armstrong resolution, the authors were able to uh, calculate the uh, anisotropic B, uh, B factor model they found the R factor decreased a lot when using anisotropic B factor, indicating that the model was anisotropic temperature factor uh, ellipsoids is superior to the one with isotropic B factors. So, um, so comparing the anisotropic temperature factor uh, refined from uh, conventional crystallography to the ones from SFX, uh, which is shown in uh, figure 3a, uh, 3b and 3c of the paper, the thermal ellipsoids looked very similar. And this proves that the SF, SFC provides adequate data for anisotropic refinement. Mm. So the uh, refinement statistics um, of PYP SFX model determined at 1.46 Armstrong, uh, resolution was found to be comparable to other four PYP models, determined mostly from uh, using synchrotron sources. And two of them are uh, room temperature models, uh, and two of them are cryogenic temperature models. And in table two of the paper, we can notice that the, the B factor uh, is the highest for one of the room temperature model, PYPA283, which is the indication of global damage. And they think it's due to the small crystal size and the long exposure time at a synchrotron uh, to reach 1.1 uh, Armstrong resolution. So uh, now we move on to figure five of the paper and uh, it shows that the temperature factor average over individual radius and is plotted as a function of radio number. So figure 5a compares the SFX model to the other two room temperature models, and figure 5b compares the SFX model to the two cryo temperature models. In, in both figures, the black curve, the black curve is the, um, represents the SFX model. And the red curve in 5A represents the PYP A293 model, and it is overall higher than the other two models. And this is another evidence of global damage. Uh, and in, in figure 5B, we can see that the, the, the individual B factor of the PYP SFX model, uh, which is determined at different resolution and also different temperature, is almost identical to the two cryo structures. Uh, except in cryo temperature, uh, three unstructured loop regions, which is marked as red, um, are frozen, so they have a little bit lower in individual B factors. And all these observations prove that the PYT, uh, the PYP model determined from SFX experiment at 1.46 Armstrong um, the resolution has a very good data quality. So, um, so uh, now we are going to talk a little, about, uh, a little about a hydrogen bond and they are important for the functionality of the PYP chrom chromophore. And the transit isomerization of the chromophore is actually controlled by three hydrogen bonds, which is shown in figures 3A of the paper. And the length of these hydrogen bonds 
in the refined PYP SFX model are uh, also uh, like marked in this figure. And we can see uh, these three hydrogen bonds are very similar to those observed in high resolution structures measured at a synchron uh, which is listed in figure uh, in table two. And, and all these three hydrogen bonds, they are all short, um, which kind of uh, yield that uh, uh, a very uh, energetically unfavored uh, chromophore pocket configuration. So it, it kind of supports the idea that the chromophore head is ready to move, is ready to snap out of it, its position. Um, so, Uh, I guess uh, that's uh, about the paper, and uh, here comes the summary. So just to summarize in this paper, the authors um, were able to uh, push the resolution limit of PYP dark state obtained from SFX experiment to 1.46 Armstrong. And, and this resolution and the isotropic B factor refinement become feasible, and uh, through uh, comparing the SFX model with other high resolution PYP models measured from synchrotron, such as individual uh, temperature factors and hydrogen bonds lens, the quality of the SFX data was uh, uh, proven to be pr pretty good. And uh, so with that, I want to thank, uh, th uh, thank everyone for, for listening to the general club paper and I'm um, ready for questions. Okay, thank you, Eugene. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. It's a little bit short. I, I, don't, I, I didn't count my time before, so. Okay. Well, that's okay. Okay, thanks. We'll just have to ask more questions then. Not really. Does anyone have any questions? Nothing. So I, I have one. Uh, do you think that this will generally be true uh, for most proteins, or is this something that's more specific to PYP? For Oh, for, uh, yeah, that's a, I think that, that would be a really good question. Like, um, but I guess it's really hard to know until you try it. Um, but um, it depends on, on the hit rates because it's, it's like 2.5 million snapshots. But if, I mean, if the hit rates, like, it, I think it's about 6%. Um, but if the protein, depending on the size of the jet, size of the, the, the crystals, or, um, Oh, it differs a lot. So, but I think um, if you get enough, enough uh, indexable, indexable uh, snapshots, then I think yeah, it's, it can be applied to other proteins. It's possible, definitely. So you you also mentioned that um, there were some loops that were disordered in the room temperature data sets and also the SFX data sets, but they were ordered or at least more ordered in the cryo temperatures, yeah, in this graph here. Yes. Uh -huh. Is that something that's also common, um, where you have? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I do think so. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, because it's, I think it's also showing in the figure on the right here. So you have these like loop regions where it's mostly flexible and unstructured. Mm -hmm. So they are they're basically at room temperature, even like with uh, with the with the SFX experiment, because I think um, the temperature for the SFX experiment is about um, maybe seven degree lower than, than the room temperature, so it's it's still like uh, above zero, so they are still flexible. But in in cryo temperature, they I think they are just frozen. So basically, what shows up with the B factor, individual B factor, is they are just it just become much lower. They are just not moving anymore. I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Oh, okay, well, thank you, Eugene. Thanks, yeah.